Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 167, Parenting When You Feel Unworthy. Meet our mom, Kelly Hutchison. She is a life coach. She is a child counselor. She is a teacher. She's a parent coach. And she's a mom to us. She will teach you to stop yelling at your kids. She will teach you to get your kids to lesson. She will teach you how to never sleep with mommy guilt again. She will teach you how to be an imperfect mom. So you can help your kids be imperfect too. And And have have harmony in the home. I cannot believe we are on episode 167. And you know what else I can't believe? That's a dramatic pause on purpose. (laughs) Our kids are back in school. And Lily is in high school and Grady is in middle school. Like what is happening? That doesn't make sense in my brain. I just looked at the countdown app of how many Saturdays we have left with Lily. I'm not going to say it publicly because some people it triggers, some people it motivates. For me, it motivates me to stay present and it's all, it's all so fleeting and this time shall pass and it's 20% of her life. So just let you know, it's not that many Saturdays. And I'm not saying after 940 Saturdays, the relationship ends. It just adjusts and takes on a different type of relationship because I am uber close with my parents. And so I know it doesn't like end. It just changes. And it's just having them within your, within our four walls. Oh, and creating this blueprint for love. So fun. So amazing. And most people who have kids in college or that have grown and flown or they're adults say they wish they could have this time back. Now, that's not to say you should enjoy every minute of parenting because what happens is we put that pressure on ourselves. So when they're like throwing up at 2 a.m. and we say to ourselves, we should be enjoying this, we should be enjoying this. It's more about embracing the 50-50 of all of it and not getting too wound up about the 50% that's the throwing up in the toilet at 2 a.m. That's just an example, but it could be over heartbreak. It could be over not making the team. It could be over bad grades. It could be over back talking. Like you're not supposed to enjoy when your child talks back. The only thing you need to control is your side of the street. So hopefully our podcast is allowing you to enjoy the 50-50 and not wanting everything to be perfect and just embracing it all and letting your kids feel their emotions and not being triggered by their big feelings that it means something about you. It's when we want to be an A-plus parent is when things get really, really, really sketchy and they get really, really confusing. And you're like, why is this so hard? You say to yourself, I must be doing something wrong. And then you look up Facebook, Instagram, all the places, and it just reinforces the feeling of not being worthy. Like I'm doing something wrong because everyone else is enjoying their life. And this is really hard and it doesn't seem hard for everybody else. So I am embracing the hard of just adjusting to a new schedule, new schools. I mean, I drop Lily off at school and my brain just doesn't even compute. Like, how does this even happen? And there's 3000 kids at her school. So I drop her off and she, like my sister said one time, it's like the school swallows them whole. She just disappears into this and just vanishes into the sea of humans that are all influencing her and loving on her and doing all the things for six hours a day. So it's a big adjustment that we're getting up earlier. It's just an adjustment. So you don't have to love it all. And just like they're not going to love everything about their childhood. And when they don't love pieces of it, it doesn't mean anything about you. So before we get to that, I received an email on Instagram from Sarah. Now, I think we need to like increase the reviews on the podcast because the pod, our podcast, when you have reviews, it puts it in other people's feeds. So we have to pay this forward. And that's not like a self promo. It's literally like God's work, putting it out there so we can allow other people to have more harmony in their homes. So Sarah writes me, hi, Kelly, I've been binging your podcast and love it. I'm starting to hear your voice in my dreams from listening so much. I started a new job doing visiting nurse. So your podcast has been my co-pilot. Quick story. Tonight, as we approach bedtime, my little guy, age five, put up a fight As I said, it was bedtime because he wanted to play a game. Mind you, earlier in the evening, he chose to color draw with me instead of playing a game. So when he started to put up a fight, 
and say he wanted to play a game, I reminded him of this. Well, full-blown meltdown, screaming, crying, yelling. Oh, believe me. It doesn't stop when they're like teenagers. It, it just changes the topic. He just so happened to have Candyland set up with the little game pieces, red, yellow, and green. All caps, red, yellow, and green. I think I know where she's going with this. I quickly remembered back to the podcast. I used the colored game pieces to show him. I said very calmly, buddy, you're in the red right now. And we need to go from red to yellow to green. I validated his feelings and waited patiently for him to start slowly calming down. When we made it to yellow, we were able to brush our teeth and pick out books. As I'm tucking him in, ready for this? He says, Mom, I'm definitely in the green now. Thank you so much. This has been a great tool for us. I plan to keep using it. When you give your kids strategies of how to calm down, they feel more empowered and they're actually thankful about it because they can't do it. They, they don't know how to do it, nor should they. Because just like we teach them reading, math, social studies, science, handwriting, cursive, teach them about the Bible, all the things that we teach them, we don't stop when it comes to emotions. And so a lot of times their big feelings trigger something in us of feeling unworthy. So a lot of us come to the parenting gig with a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of stress from our past, a lot of messaging that we received growing up that it should be this way. And we just kind of rinse repeat of what our parents did. And we think that that's the way because consciously it's harder to take the path of more resistance. If you did not like the way that you were raised, it's very easy to repeat that because that's all you know. It doesn't mean that something's wrong with you or something's wrong with your parents. It's just when you know better, you do better, which Maya Angelou is a famous quote. I love that. And so a lot of us come to this parenting gig with feelings of unworthiness, feelings of holes in our heart from pain, trauma, stress from our past, which is completely normal. There's not one human being on this planet that doesn't go, let's say you're 25 when you have kids, that doesn't go zero to 25 without pain, trauma, and stress. It's all in a continuum. So a lot of times when people try to honor their stress, trauma, pain, they say, oh, well, people have it so much worse. I didn't have it that bad. I was spanked five days a week, but most people were spanked seven days a week or they were given up to foster care because of the abuse. That's just an example. But a lot of times we have this sense of unworthiness going into the parenting gig. And then we think that our kids are here to make us feel whole to fill in those blanks, so to speak. So every child comes with all the bells and whistles. There's not one child on this planet who doesn't come with their own throbbing spirit. So when you know that, you're not coming to the relationship with so much unworthiness. You're coming to the relationship with more wholeness. Like God gave me these children for a reason. A lot of times we have this envision for 18, 25 years of what it's going to be like. And 10 times out of 10 times, It does not go the way that we envisioned because we are not psychics. We don't have crystal balls. We have no idea. It's just something that's made up in the figment of our imagination. So when we have a child that isn't the way we thought they would be, whether it's their temperament, their personality, their outgoingness, or their lack of outgoingness, or their academics, or their sports, or the XYZ, fill in the blanks, then somehow we use that as evidence to reinforce our unworthiness. And that is too big of a toll to put onto our kids. Nor can they do that even if they wanted to. They try and they love abundantly and they love from a place of wholeness. But if we come to the relationship with damaged goods, so to speak, we think that we're damaged. We think that something's wrong with us. Then all we're going to do is look for evidence of how we're not good enough in using our children's behavior as a measuring stick. It can show up in different ways. It's like going into a new relationship when you're in your teens or 20s or 30s, and you go into that relationship and you have pain and trauma for past relationships. So you bring that like Samsonite luggage into your, let's say your dating relationship, and you're coming into the relationship with a feeling of unworthiness because of past pain and trauma from an ex Then you come into that relationship, well, it didn't work with him or her, but it definitely will work with this person and he or she will make me feel whole. He or she will make me feel worthy. And in the beginning, 
it actually happens. And you get that shot of serotonin and dopamine and all the good stuff. And it feels like a quick fix. Like, oh, it was the relationship that made me feel unworthy. This relationship now will make me feel worthy. But just like you can't do that with someone you're dating or someone you're married to, you can't do that to your kids because it has to be an inside job. And when you know that you come from a place of worthiness, that nothing that has happened to you makes you broken or makes you not good enough because people that hurt you or betrayed you or abused you had a broken heart. So they passed on that broken heartedness onto you because they were unconscious. So you are not broken no matter what you've done in the past or what's happened to you. You are not broken. You are worthy as you are. Even if you're homeless under the, under the bridge, living on the streets, you're still just as whole and worthy as someone that you put on a pedestal. So you're not broken, but you might have a broken heart. And when you're aware of this, this is so empowering and so freeing because when you're aware of this, you don't use your child as like a neosporin over a wound. You use your child as a reminder of your own worthiness because when you feel worthy, you'll see it in your child. And when your child feels worthy, they will see it in you. They already feel worthy. No baby comes out of the hospital thinking I'm not good enough. I'm to this, I'm to that. They already are worthy and whole. And you can see that in any baby. You can see that in any toddler. You can see it in any child. What happens is over time, we project our unworthiness onto them. And then we blame them for our side of the street. If they would just do X, Y, Z, then I wouldn't lose my mind. And then you're giving all your emotional power to a toddler or a five-year-old or a teenager But when you come to the relationship with worthiness, you let them be who they want to be. And then you give that same freedom to yourself to be who you want to be in this relationship. So I just want to remind you, no matter what you've done, what you're doing, what's been done to you, your past, your future, and your present, you are worthy as you are. Accepting the as is of who you are with all your flaws and all your awesomeness. And that's why I'm always talking about flossomeness. You are all flossom, and just as your kids are all flossom, they are flawed and they are awesome. But when you don't expect perfection from yourself, you won't project that onto them and want perfection from them because that projection of perfection 10 out of 10 times will backfire because once they get the straight A's, then it might be the sports. Once they have the behavior, then it might be the straight A's that they didn't get. And then somehow that is a reflection of you and your worthiness. But when you are two separate beings with your own throbbing spirit, with your own flaws and your own awesomeness, then you can coexist and not be codependent in a mesh with each other and find your worthiness outside of your child and knowing it internally versus using our kids as a pawn to fill in those gaps that we feel have put upon us by external factors or other people or how you were born, or your height, or your weight, or your cleanliness of your home. Do you see how that all gets stored in our little hearts? Our brokenheartedness is projected onto our kids, and then we don't want to feel that broken heart, so we want our kids to be the neosporin or the medicine to fix our broken heart. And like we always talk about, they can't do it if they wanted to, and it's not their job. It's too tall of a task. So when you know this, you can show up whole and abundant and feeling that sense of good enoughness because God chose you to be their parent, no matter how they came into the world. Foster care, you're the grandparent, IVF, you don't know who the father is, the mother's been absent, whatever it is, whatever the circumstances are, you're always worthy and whole. And then you project that onto your kids and then they feel worthy and whole and they don't have to do anything on this planet to deserve it. Their presence, their as is, and who they are at the soul level is enoughness. But we have to give that gift of enoughness to ourselves first, and then it's very easy to project that onto our kids and see that wholeness within them. So just know that you are worthy and whole already, and then you can show up in that worthy and whole mindset with your kids. And they will feel that and that lack of pressure of that they need to do and be and mold a certain way. They're already worthy and whole. They're a child of God, and God does not make mistakes. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. 
Hey mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting bootcamp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.